So this is inspiration for this video. Uh, after posting the gradient, had to do a gradient. This uh, Reddit user posted in my Reddit group, r forward slash ink stitch, that they had accomplished this right here. This looks really good. This person had uh, given a nice little description on the process that they went through to figure out how to do this. And I think, I have figured out number one an easy way to do it and number two a way to do it step by step so that others can join along and turn it into a tutorial and and show you how to do it so that's what we're going to do here i have my inkscape set up with a my standard four by four inch uh work area we're gonna we're gonna set a text We'll go LTL, short for Low Tech Linux. Sounds good. Hit the text. I'm going to change that to about a 175 and do bold. Nice. Let's bring it in. It's fine that it's a little long. I'm just going to switch it down from the right. Okay, so usually when you're working with basic text, with uh, just system text, I always say first thing you got to do is do object to path and then you got to do break apart and troubles. No, we're going to do all that later because Inkscape can work with this, although Ink Stitch cannot. So right now we just want to work within Inkscape tools. So I'm going to duplicate this two more times. Control D. Control D. And on each one of these, I'm going to set a little bit different of a color just so you can see more easily what I'm doing. So each one of those is a different color. Control Z, Control Z is our friend. So each one of those has a different color. Just, they don't have to to make it work. Um, I'm just doing that so you have a better representation of what I'm doing. So now I'm going to draw a block. This is going to be my cutaway block. This is the part that's going to be the gradient between the top half and the bottom half of the letter. This is the part that's going to be the gradient. And we'll set it to a different color too, just so you can see. So right now, all I'm going to do is we're going to do this first step. We're going to do an intersection. And what an intersection does, it cuts away everything that's not part of an intersection. So I'm going to click that and then I'm going to click my first layer, which in this case is the blue layer. So where there's an intersection is right here, right here, right here. And that's all going to go away. Everything else is going to go away. So intersection. Boom. So right now, the only thing left on that top layer is these little blue squares. I'll show you that just by doing that. All that's left. Hit Control Z so I can put it back. So now I want to duplicate that. And then I want to cut those little blue squares away from the next layer down. So we're going to duplicate. We're going to select. Keep in mind, as multi select is with the shift button. So now I have the little blue squares, copy and the next layer down of text. And we're gonna do a difference. Path, difference. So now that layer has a big hole in the middle, as you can see, that is perfect. Control Z to put it all back in place. Outstanding. Now on this bottom one, I'm gonna go ahead and no fill and then give it a stroke and I want a black and I want a 1.5 to start out with. We may go a little bit more than that. I think we need a little bit more than that. Okay, we'll go with that. So that's going to be my outline stitch later on. I'm going to hide that layer right now so I'm not working with it. Right now I have the cutaway and the cut into. Now we have to do a break apart. We have to. Actually, now 
we need to do on all three layers we need to do an object path object path and now we need to do a break apart and we're going to make sure that we have a no fill respected yep select that icon right there for no fill respected so now we can go into break apart Okay, so now we should have separate piece for the top and separate face for the bottom for each one of these. And I'm going to select them. Okay, show you how I did that. I'm gonna control select the first one. That tells Inkscape that you want to select individual parts. And then I'm gonna push shift and hold it down while I select these other parts. Okay, now I'm going to select a color. We're going to select a green. Yeah, we'll go with that. Now I'm going to do the same thing and get out of that. Push control. And then shift, hold shift down and select the bottom ones. And I'm going to select a slightly, let's go with some color fashionable blue. Okay. I like it. Okay, going to do the same thing on these. I'm going to select that first one. Select, select. Now, right now we want the same color as one of the others. So right now we'll just pick that top one. We want to duplicate those. And then we want to select the color of the bottom one, which is, if I remember right, is that one. So now we have each one of these. This is the green. And this is the blue. So you want the green one and we're going to go to, uh, don't have it up there. So we're going to go to edit XML editor. We're going to flip over to inkstitch.org slash docs slash features. And we're going to grab this little command right here because I don't remember that by heart and control copy. So I'm going to hide those first three. Now I've got those. XML editor. Hit the little plus button to add an attribute. Control paste. Attribute, attribute value. I'm going to put it as a one. And do the same thing with this one. Plus. Control paste. Attribute one. Same thing with this one plus and one I'm going to unhide those first three because we need the same exact thing on those plus paste one plus paste one plus plus paste one now they all have the same set number we want to see i need to see i need these to gradient up Let's check out those params see which way that is stitching uh, turn off the underlay turn off the under path so our blue is stitching dense, dark, down to light. That's what we want. That's not what we want. We need it to go the other direction. So we want that to go the other angle, which is opposite of zero is 180. And I thank YouTube user Dragonlord for making sure that I knew that. So that one's going the right direction. The other, the other one should be going the right direction automatically. Okay, so let's go to, this is our bottom layer that we're gonna turn into a satin stitch. Ink stitch, satin tools, convert line to satin. Boom, done and done. Okay, so on these, I want these to, 
want these to stitch from up to down. So extensions, ink stitch, commands, attach command, and do fill stitch, starting ending. And I want the stop to come down here. And then show these, and we're going to do the same thing with these. In the other direction, from low up. Or, no. Yeah, top down's fine. But we still want them to go to ink stitch, commands, attach command. Apply. We're going to do the, the green and then come down and then the gradient green come down and then the blue gradient come down and then the blue come down so everything's going to be going down so we want it to do the same exact thing okay so we're going to take the green and i'm going to drop that all the way down and then I'm going to take the green gradient stitching, drop it down, and then move it up, maybe. I don't know yet. We'll get there in a minute. And then the blues. Drop down and then the blue. Drop down because it still ain't. Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. So now our satin stitch is on top at least. Let's see what we look like. Okay, so they're both there, but they're both doing the same direction stitching. We need the green to be dense high. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's dense high. That's what we need. So that means that the blue one is wrong. So we want the blue one to be dense at the bottom. Yep, that's the one. So right here, opposite zero is 180. Extensions, ink stitch, visualize. Alrighty, this should look about right. Oh, sweet. Let's see what the realistic looks like. Looks pretty good. I'm going to throw a trim on everything real quick. And let's go see what it looks like. Did a quick stitch out and this is what we came up with obviously i chose yellow and red as my two colors black as my outline stitch 
little bit of tension issues in the red. Other than that, this looks really good. I am really happy about this. So I hope that helped you out. Figure out how to use gradient slash fill color fill stitching in real world environment. Thanks for watching.